As the years go by, GTA 5 Online keeps getting worse and worse. Before you could grind missions and make tons of money, every time something new comes out they nerf older ways to make money. Missions and races could make you millions before and now they barely make you any money at all. And we're going to be talking about that today. I guarantee there is at least one thing in this video that you guys did not know. So I hope you enjoy. Just before we get it started, be sure to check out Digazani if you guys do need any money in GTA 5. Also, join my Discord if you guys do want a chance to win a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and without further ado, let's get it started. So we're literally just going to jump straight into this here. And the first thing we're going to talk about is inflation in this game. So shark card values haven't changed according to the inflation in the game. Did you guys know that the first update that ever came out in GTA 5, the Beach Bum update, all the content of that update was actually given out for free to all of the players playing the game, which was the first and the last time that ever happened. Back when the game was released, the average price for a streetcar was $225,000 and an air vehicle or a boat was 600 k Currently, as of 2018 actually, the average cost for a car is 1.8 million dollars and the average price for a vehicle in the air or on the water is 3.2 million dollars that's insane so let's do some calculations here back then the most expensive thing was the titan at two million dollars and you could spend a hundred dollars and buy the eight million dollar shark card and you'd be able to buy the Titan for $2 million, the best apartment for 500 k and the best car for a $1 million, and still have tons of money left over, which is exactly what you want from a video game. Nowadays, the most expensive thing in the game is the yacht, the Luxor Deluxe, or a fully maxed out Maze Bank Tower CEO office. You need $13 million to buy the most expensive thing in the game. That would be one $8 million shark card and another $50 shark card for $3.5 million. And that's to buy one thing. Now, if we calculated the inflation in this game properly, then a $100 shark card should get you between $40 to $50 million. That gives you enough money to actually go and buy the most expensive thing in the game and a few other things and still have tons of money left over. And the reason why I think that needs to happen is because things get so expensive and there's so much stuff to buy. Plus, when you add on to the fact that literally everything in game keeps getting more and more expensive over time, but shark cards stay the exact same. So that's one of the big issues that I see, and that's why GTA keeps getting worse and worse. But don't worry, there's more. So let's get into talking about that. Next up is every new vehicle they add is extremely expensive, even the older vehicles. Some new vehicles, like the new Ballista Kanjo, are old and should be cheaper than 100 k but it's weird because they're more expensive than a 9F Cabrio, which is the Audi R8 in-game, a Banshee 900R, which is a supercar upgraded at Benny's, a monster truck, a Turismo supercar, and a Lamborghini Urus in-game, and the list just goes on and on forever. Plus upgrades, that's going to be about 700 k for this car. Now, I'm not going to lie, I love that car in real life, and it's really fun in-game. I just made my friend buy it, but come on. It's a really, really old car, and in real life, it was hella cheap back then, and even now, it's really not that expensive, so why the hell is it 400 k in-game more expensive than half of the cars? When you really think about it, in this case, we're solely paying for just the upgrades, making the total over $700,000 for that car. Another thing, they keep juicing GTA 5, and keep putting off GTA 6. Everybody knows that, and I'm not going to go in depth on that. Now let's talk about some missions and races and jobs and stuff like that. Right now, you can make about 15k by playing a stunt race, coming in first in an entirely full lobby. Yeah, that's right. $15,000, that's it. Back then, Blowout 2 used to get you 10,000 RP and 40k in a few minutes. That's one of the missions in the game. Now, you can barely make $25,000 and no more than 5,000 RP, and that's in like 15 minutes or more, which is terrible because it was one of the best ways to grind. Practically every mission, every race, and every single Rockstar created job barely pays out any money anymore, and you'd be lucky to make over 30k from a mission or 60k from an adversary mode, but you're going to spend 30 minutes on that. 
even if you play these adversary modes with double money, you'll still make a decent amount of money, not a great amount though. And the only way you can make money from races nowadays is if you play Hot Ring Saber Races, which is the NASCAR ones. I'm not 100% sure what they're called, the Hot Ring Circuit. If you come in the top five with a full lobby of 30 people, then you will make a little bit of money. Not a lot, a little bit. And that's practically the only way to make money from Rockstar Created Jobs now. It's literally just terrible. Back in the day when the game first came out and even afterwards of that, People used to grind all of these missions and play races and do all that fun stuff, but now there's literally no reason for anybody to want to do that because if they're trying to make money to buy even one thing in this game and they don't have enough money to purchase it, they're going to want to go and do some missions and stuff like that. And the thing is, we grew up, if you're a veteran player in the game, I've grown up with actually playing GTA 5 when it first came out and I grinded those missions. I played those adversary modes, I did those races and all of that, and we were making money from that. And the thing is, it was actually easy to do that because we were all new to the game, we were all playing those, and we kind of got a feel for the game. Nowadays, new players will have to come into the game and they'll be introduced to extremely competitive open wheel races, stunt races, extremely hard heists to do. If you're new to the game, it's not going to be easy. And then after that, they'll go into free mode, and when we were in free mode, the most OP vehicle back then was the tank and the laser. The tank you had to unlock at level 75, and the laser you got to go to the military base to get, and if someone blew you up, you have to go all the way back there. That's the only way to grief back then. Now, you'll go into free mode and you'll get obliterated by a fucking space cannon, an oppressor mark II, and who knows what else will be in the game when you guys are watching this video at that point. Could be a year from now and we could have literally UFOs flying around with like warp drives and laser guns. Oh wait, we already have laser guns. But you guys get the idea. It's so hard for a new player now, which just makes it really bad considering you can't even play those missions and races and adversary modes anymore because you just won't make enough money. If they are triple money in RP, that's a little bit different of a story, but not really because if you still play a stunt race, you won't make an absolute killing from it. And the only way to make a decent amount from it, even when it's triple money in RP, is if you guys come in first. And another thing, and this one might not bother a lot of people, but recently I've been grinding the Diamond and Casino heist a lot and what I realized from that heist is that you literally spend three quarters of the time while doing preps just driving around the fucking map yesterday when I did it we had to steal a group sex truck okay and instead of going anywhere in the city for some fucking reason it was at the very top of the map six miles away then we had to drive that slow ass truck six miles all the way back to the arcade which is just terrible and all of the other missions, they practically just make you fly around like crazy. And if you don't have an Oppressor Mark II, it's going to take hours for you guys to complete all the prep missions for this heist. Don't forget, some of them you can pay to skip, and it took me a while to do it. Not a while, about an hour and a half. But I paid to skip like five of the missions, and then we still took a long time to do it. So if you're new to the game, you try to do the heist, you buy an arcade, it's going to take you guys a long time. And that's one of the things I hate about this game now. It's practically repeating everything that's already happened. Everything just keeps repeating itself. Like I said, over and over and over again. It's practically the same thing. You go, you get something, you fly a really far distance to get there or drive there, drive a far distance to get back, lose the cops, deliver it, and you're blessed. Another thing, like I said, you're pretty much just driving around everywhere. That's what the game is. The map is massive. You're literally just driving everywhere. When you have to resupply on stock for your bunker, for your MC businesses, your crates, you just gotta drive freaking everywhere everywhere to do that no matter what it is you will be driving a pretty far distance at some point if you're doing crate resupplies or you're doing mc business resupplies or bunker resupplies you might have to drive all the way across the map to go and steal some shitty truck drive it all the way back there and then you guys will finally deliver your stock but the thing is it won't even fill up your stock bar you'll get one bar and then you got to do that another three times which is why it's more worth it to just buy supplies because you're going to be resupplying constantly and if your bunker or your mc businesses are upgraded it's gonna the supplies are just going to keep going faster and faster and faster which means they're going to run out pretty quick and you're just going to be stuck resupplying constantly until the stock is full and that's going to take a long time like hours and hours on end and this is why gta 5 online keeps getting worse and worse back in the day we didn't have to deal with this stuff a new dlc comes out we get free content everything was fun no griefing no nothing whatsoever it was just peaceful Everybody having an amazing time. Nowadays, the game literally just begs for money. Rockstar got money 
hungry because this game is not technically dead. A lot of people think it actually is dead, but it's not. Did you guys know that it is actually ranked number 5 on the Steam top games list right now and is still the third most popular game of all time with over like 150 million units sold? It's still amazing. They definitely did something right. Shout out to the people at Rockstar Games for making an amazing game. But they're getting money hungry, they're making the game worse, people aren't enjoying it, people are leaving, they're losing their audience, and there's still a lot of people playing this game. But I'm telling you, it's, if it keeps going like this, a lot of people are going to stop playing this game permanently. And that is why GTA 5 keeps getting worse and worse. Anyways guys, that is going to wrap up the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. Hopefully I told you guys something you didn't already know about in the game. And I will catch you guys in the next video.